everybody what's going on welcome back to my channel we are here for the pose review this is season two episode one acting up before we get into the review please remember to subscribe to my channel hit the notification button like this video and leave a comment let me know what you think about it okay so i'm just gonna get right into it i love 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 pose sorry i wasn't with y'all last season of course i was too afraid if you've watched any of my previous videos i've talked about it before how i was too afraid to start a youtube channel so i finally started it so luckily for you i'm here for season two and we are here for pose baby yes get into it it was the fucking bomb okay so we just gonna start everything off so, Blanca and Pray Tell, it starts off, they are at Hunt, uh, Heart Island. And what Heart Island used to be, it used to be like an old tuberculosis ward or whatever. It's on a secluded island by itself, right? And as they're even going there, Blanca's like, what are we doing all the way out here? Like, it, the shit was creepy. It looked old, gross, abandoned. Now, this is back in 1990 now, the, when AIDS and HIV was popping like popcorn wildfire wildfire okay so they are out there to visit the burial site for one of uh pray tell's ex-boyfriends his name is keenan so he goes out there well him and um blanca both go there they get into there in the place and the chick that works at the front desk you you know how she was so stereotypical of the bitches that work at dmv not saying all of them are like this but a lot of people that you see the stereotypes that you see on tv how they got attitudes they mean they irritated they hate their job like they walk in they say the bitch in you say hello she just looked at me like like sign in bitch you don't like your job quit ain't nobody telling your monkey ass to be there any goddamn way but um he's trying to tell her okay i'm here to see a friend of mine uh you know his grave site his name is blah, blah blah she was like um look this is for unclaimed babies unclaimed bodies people who couldn't afford burial sites or pay, uh, people whose families just didn't care about them babies are on potter's island people with the hiv and aids we keep them quarantined you know we don't want them getting the rest of the people infected black is like bitch they already did she was like i don't know but we don't know how that stuff spreads which that goes to show you right there to start off right in the back. In the late 80s, early 90s, everybody, everybody was so ignorant about HIV and about AIDS. Nobody had education about it. Hell, I was only 10 years old, my dog on self. I didn't know nothing about it. And from what we knew back then, people used to label it as a gay man's disease. People were so uneducated uneduc about it. There were no medications about it. They told you abstinence was the best way to avoid it altogether. Luckily, we are at a day and age when people are so educated and there is so much knowledge out there if you don't know about AIDS and HIV and if you are still so closed-minded to think that you can get it from somebody spitting on you or somebody touching the same thing that you have touched are you sharing a fork behind somebody you're fucking stupid I'm sorry and I don't feel saying sorry for that I mean I'm, I don't feel bad for saying that but you're fucking stupid moving right along so they go to the back and it is so fucking creepy what it is. It's like this mass grave of pine boxes and 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 just dead people. They're in the pine boxes and they're labeled as unknown male with the with the number and that's it. It is so creepy and the people who are putting these pine boxes in this mass grave, they're all in quarantine. They got on hazmat suits. Like they were so it's mind blowing. It's it's mind blowing to me to think how ignorant people were back then. But nevertheless, they had on these whole fucking hazmat suits and all this shit to put these unknown people. So it's like it's not even like he could really even go to a, a burial site to see this person he was looking for, his ex. So what it was. People have these stones, and they've made this big um, sort of memorial um, commemorating the people that they have lost to HIV. And there were thousands of stones out there with people's names on them. And, you know, he paid his respect. You know, he kissed his, and, you know, he put his little stone down. But, y'all, it was, oh, my God, it gave me chills seeing all those thousands of stones out there of people that have died from HIV and AIDS. And this was just 1990. This was just 1990. It's at the beginning of the episode. This was in 1990. And it was already thousands of people that had died from HIV. Y'all, it was sad. It touched me. It, it 
Blanca goes to see Nurse Judy to see about her lab results. As you know, Blanca is HIV positive. And so she went to go see Nurse Judy. So, you know, just do her regular checkups that she has to do. She's asking Nurse Judy, you know, what is her, you know, what does her labs look like? She knows she's doing good. She's been taking her Flintstone vitamins. She stopped drinking. She's doing everything right like she's supposed to. And so Nurse Judy tells her her white blood cells are great. She's doing good. But her T cells have dropped below 200. And so they have to upgrade her status from having HIV. HIV to now having full-blown AIDS and when I tell you that hit Blanca like a ton of bricks it hit me just to see because you could you could see the life just kind of drain out of her face and it appears that she's worried for herself and she's worried about her health and she doesn't want to die because she's you know she's worried for herself that's what it appears and so nurse judy tries to give her um well she offers her azt which is the medicine that they had back then to help you know fight the symptoms of hiv and aids and so Blanca tells her, you know, this is ain't that for rich white folks? Like, I can't afford that. And so Nurse Judy tells her what happens is the wealthy queens, as they're dying, what they do, they donate their medicines so that they can um, give it to the next person that's fighting HIV and that's fighting AIDS because those medicines are going to go to waste anyway. And so that, I thought that was bomb. Oh, my God. I thought that was so, that that actually like put a lump in my throat just seeing that just to 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 know that that's really what happened that people would donate the rich queens as she said would donate their medications to clinics and to the small clinics to, to people who couldn't afford that medication so that they can leave live um they can leave their legacy on this earth some kind of way that was so fucking bomb y'all so block is like look pray tell told me about a friend of his that he had that was taking azt and they said that shit was worse than chemo and nurse judy is like look sweetheart i'm gonna keep it real with you this is all we've got so either you gonna take this or you not gonna take this and you know what i thought was so fucking bomb about blanca all she was worried about was her kids that's all she was worried about she was worried about what are they gonna do if i'm not here not what am i gonna, what are they gonna do if i'm not here blanca you ain't a mama naturally but bitch you a mama you a mama bitch all right, y'all, so back at the ball, they are bumping Madonna's Vogue. Now, when I heard that come on, baby, let me tell you, I got crunk because I have not heard come on Vogue in a minute. And when that song came out, I was like 10, almost 11 years old. I remember the video. I remember it being black and white. I remember the slick back, sleek buns that they had in there. Yes. And the motherfuckers dancing in the bubbles. I remember the the stretching of the legs. and the. I remember uh, it was the bomb. I love that doggone video i loved it so um angel's doing her thing like she does she is fucking killing it out there and i love the outfit that um the outfit that she had on the dress i love the big hat she had it like the little beyonce thing tilt to the side she had it leaning it was cute i loved it and of course face was beaten snatched for the gods and of course angel won it was angel of course like anything she gets in Bitch is going to win, okay? That's just what it is. It's Angel. That's just what it is. <laughs> so, um, they are all, well, Blanca is like really hyping up this Madonna song, talking about this Madonna song is going to be the song that's going to help to put them on the map and get them celebrated. They, meaning gay boys, get them celebrated and get them known and getting people to know them and accept them for who they are. And of course, everybody else is like, girl, bye, you, you, you doing too much. But truth be told, that song did change the game for the LGBTQ community. I will say that she... She did y'all justice with that song, baby, because uh, I love that daggone song. I love the motherfucking song. Um, Blanca, oh, the next day, the next day, Blanca catches Angel ass out on the fucking pier on the fucking whole stroll. She out there on the whole stroll on the pier. She roll up on her ass in a fucking taxi. And uh, Angel walk over to the car thinking it's going to be a little zaddy in the car, right? And so the window come down. She said, hey, papi, what's going on? Blanca come pop up at that bitch like that. She's like, what the fuck are you doing out here? God damn, I told her. She was like, look here. What I'm finna be do? Flipping burgers, scrubbing toilets? Nah, I don't think so. She needs some money now. Blanca tell her, you better come 
Get your motherfucking ass in this goddamn car. She get in that car. She tells her, look, I got a plan for you. It's this modeling gig coming up. It's this casting call. And I want you to go to this casting casting call for this modeling thing. Because, you know, you can do it. You got the face. You got the boom, bam, bing, bang, boom. You can do it. Angel's like, look. You see them? I like the way she said that, too. She said the real cute. She's like, look, you see her? She said it real cute. But anyways, Blanca's telling her, look, you just as fish as the rest of them goddamn fish. You better get up in there, and you better do your motherfucking thing. So she hypes her up, of course, and she like, fuck this. All right, cool. She talks her into doing the little modeling thing. whoop de whoop We gonna get to that. Lulu and Candy. Okay, so it's the next scene or whatever, and they're at this funeral. Lulu and Candy's there. Pray Tell's there. Nurse Judy is there. It's a couple other people that's there. But um, they're there for this young guy that passed away from AIDS. He was. He looked like he wasn't no older than about 19, 20-something years old. Lulu and Candy in there being shade. The shade. They in there being shady than the motherfucker. Talking about how glim and gloomy funerals are, which is, I get it, but, th you know, okay, I'm going to keep it real. Funerals, yes, they glim. They, I mean, they're grim. They're, you know, gloomy, yada, yada, yada. But I always got to find a humor in something. I'm sorry. I can't just be down. Even when my mother passed away, me and my baby sister was in there cracking jokes. And me and my best friend, later on, we was cracking jokes. And then my other homegirls and a friend of mine came. I think, and we was all cracking jokes. I got to find the funny in it somewhere. So, in a way, I wasn't mad at Candy and Lulu because they was cracking jokes at the funeral. That's just me. That's just what I do. But uh, pray tell, right? They asked for Phil. He was like, look here, bitches. Y'all show some motherfucking respect. <laughs> Nurse Judy and um, pray tell are talking, and they're talking about um, Nurse Judy tells him that this is her 457th funeral. He tells her this is his 210th funeral of people that have died with HIV or AIDS, or, you know, the symptoms or whatever, complications of HIV and AIDS. And so they're joking around. And they're saying the first one to a thousand wins a toaster. So I like Nurse Judy. I like how she, her and, uh, oh, I shook my whole damn camera with my thick thighs. Thick thighs save lives. <laughs> but um, they're cracking jokes, whatever. And I like how, you know, she's making light of the situation, a situation that is sad and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But um, they go over and they, they see the young guy and they pay their respects to him. And... It was just sad, y'all. I like that little part. I mean, it was sad because it was a funeral or whatever, but they was cracking their jokes like they do. It's post. But it was just sad seeing that that young boy on in there. I'm only 30. Hell, I could have been that boy's mama. He looked like he was no older than 19, maybe 20 years old. But just to know that they were that young, dying of age, which they're people that young now, but back then, I mean, they just... Uh, Mm, they just looked down on them. They treated them like like they were nothing. They tossed them to the side. They didn't give them medications. They they didn't give them education. It was just, ooh, it was just, it was bad. It was bad. But like I said, Nurse Judy kept pray tell smiling the whole time. And so, of course, afterwards, he's like, ooh, I need a drink. She's like, no, I don't need a drink, but I need you to go somewhere with me. And um, you ain't got a choice. Basically, she drug his ass to an act rally. In an act rally, it was um, act up, fight back, fight AIDS. That's what they were chanting at that rally. And what the rally is, it's a rally to bring awareness to HIV and AIDS, to get people talking about it, to help find a cure for it. And when Pray Tell is there, he sort of has an epiphany because he has been touched by HIV and AIDS personally. His ex-boyfriends have died from it. Close friends and you know family have died from it. So that's something that's near and dear to his heart, right? So... Nurse Judy, by taking him there, sparked a, a, a fire in him, you know, sparked a flame in him to where he wants to get involved. And so he starts chatting with them, fight back, fight now, fight AIDS. And, you know, he wants to get involved and, and to be a part of that. So <clears throat> I think that was cool. Poppy, Blanca, and Angel go to the casting call, the modeling thing that um, Blanca wanted her to go to. 
and when they go in it's a little black little cute black chick that's at the front you know signing all the girls in and so of course angel gets there angel's nervous as hell and the girl can see on her face that she was really nervous seeing all the other girls that was around her right all of them the skinny prissy little white girls and here she is looking all ethnic and all of her beauty with all of her beautiful nappy hair and all of that and so the girl tells her look i was where you were three years ago and it was my look that stood out from everybody else that got me to where i am now so girl embrace it and work with it okay so that was some encouragement that she needed and of course as she's getting ready to go back there Blanca grabs Poppy and they get ready to leave and Angel's like no nah, girl don't you leave me like no bitch I need you to go with me and Blanca's like look girl if I go back there with you your little jig is gonna be up they gonna see the Adam's apple and they gonna know uh some ain't right boss some ain't right so you go back there you do your thing don't be afraid do what mama taught you and you slay them hoes <laughs> that's what she told now nah, that's what she told though so she ends up going back there and the lady who is, you know, picking the models, whatever, she likes her, but she tells her that she needs to get some headshots done. And of course, Blanca's like, you know, I can't afford that. That's why I'm coming to you. So she gives her the number to a photographer for her to call so she can get some headshots done with the photographer. That night they're at dinner, right? It's Friday night dinner. That's mandatory in the house. Dinner going good. Everybody's chilling. You know, talking about Blanca tell, I'm not, not Blanca, Angel tells them that she ended up getting called back for the little casting thing or whatever, that she got the gig, but she needs to get some headshots or whatever done. Shit is going good, right? Then comes in Electra Abundance's ass, late as fuck, with an attitude as fuck, with a mink and a fur on as fuck. How you getting all of that, boo boo? What you doing? What you doing? Mm-hmm. So, of course, she walks in and um, Blanca uh, is telling, well, Blanca and Pray Tell is telling basically all the kids, like, look, I want you all to be involved at the, um, this protest that's going to be held at St. Cathedral's Church. I want everybody to come support your community, come out and be a part of this. Electra Abunda, she don't give a fuck. She's like, uh-uh, I can't do that. I, I got something to do. I got to work. And so... Block is telling her, look, this it's not an option. This is mandatory. You need to be there to support your community. She's like, fine. That motherfucker, uh, Electra, I like her, but she she's beautiful to look at. But you know what? She really can't act. And I hope don't nobody come for me for saying that. But it's just, not that she can't act. It's just her delivery sometimes. It's, it seems like it's a little bit forced. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but the bitch is snatched for the God. She looks beautiful. She's shown sure up beautiful. Yes, she is, God. So, um, back at Blanca's job. Now, Blanca works in the nail salon, right? So, back over there at her job, she's trying to finish up everything so she can get ready to go, right? And, of course, Vogue is still playing in the background. <laughs> that's Blanca's jam, baby. Blanca ride or die for Madonna in that motherfucking Vogue, okay? So, um, her boss is telling her she wants her to say, her boss is a bitch. Oh, she's a bitch. She's telling her she wants her to stay late to do three more clients. And Blanca's like, look, you know, no, I gotta go. I got people that are waiting on me. You know, I can't stay. I've gotta go. So, her boss was like, well, why don't you just quit your job then? You should be kissing my feet for hiring you ladies like to get their nails done by other ladies she tries to clock her and call her out like that in a shop full of motherfucking people you fucking bitch you that made me oh that made me just want to kick shit over and just knock all her motherfucking nail polish over oh that bitch made me mad when she did that goddamn shit she did me goddamn oh but Blanca says you know what I'm going to start my own motherfucking shop. And you know what I'm going to call my shop? I'm going to call my shop Vogue Nails. And I'm going to take over the motherfucking nail place. Or she, that ain't, but she said it something like that. But you know what? It's like 5,100 Vogue Nails in Austin alone. In Texas for sure. In the world. I wonder is that where Vogue Nails really came from? Did that come from the Madonna song? I don't know. That would be bomb if it did though. Vogue nails. So, they ended up doing their protest at St. Cathedral's Church. It started off real quiet. It was a church full of fucking people, right? I mean, it was a church. It was a tabernacle, okay? I mean, it was big. It was a cathedral. Full of people, right? Quiet, right? So, next thing you know, everybody starts standing up, and they got their fists in the air, right? 
they get up in the aisles and they just start laying across the floor everywhere. I mean, it's crazy the way it happened. They were quiet though the way they did that shit. They, they did this like stealth like. They were mad fucking quiet. Laid out doing their little thing, right? Then the the I don't know what he's called, the the the, the pastor, the the reverend or whatever he's called. He's like, everyone, please get up and start praying. That's when Angel's like, praying won't cure AIDS. It it went down from there. They did. I like that little protest that they did. They, it, it, it was very powerful. It gave me fucking goosebumps to see Pray Tell yelling the way he was. He he was Bobby Lai. Oh, baby. he. I mean, Bobby Porter, he was acting. He was acting, and I loved it. It gave me, well, I'm thinking about it again. It gave me goosebumps. I love that little protest that they did. It was the bomb. Like I said, it started off really quiet. Then it got loud. Then the popos came. And of course, when the popos come, the popos come and they shut shit motherfucking down. And that's what the fuck they did. Um, Angel is doing her photo shoot and um, everything is going good. You know, it starts off, you know, um, she's doing all these different looks or whatever. And it's a lot of people there at first, right? And so as the day goes by, more and more people are starting to leave from the photo shoot. Until finally... It's nobody left but Angel and the photographer. Come to find out, the photographer actually recognizes her from the peers. And at first, she's like, mm, I just got one of them kind of faces. And he's like, nah, 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 baby. I, I recognize your ass from the peers. Which goes, you know, which brings up the next question, nigga. What you doing at the peers? How you know what go on at the peers? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... He tells her, you know, well, she was like, well, what you want, you know, well, what I got to do for these photos, whatever. So basically he tells her he wants some, he wants to shoot some photos of her for his own personal collection, right? Shit was going good. She was doing some, oh, this one look she had where she was all snatched back. She had the bun snatched back like this, something like this. And she had like this little feathery thing on. Oh, yes, baby. And then she was, um, this other look she had, she was like standing um, it looked like she was on, um, like this top tower of something. She had like this little, the little Beyonce leotard. That's what I call them. With the wind flowing, baby, with the little drape of the drape, drape, drape she was doing. And she looked fucking bomb, right? So, she getting tired. She like, look, all right. No, you know, I take that back. First, there was a lot of people there she was doing it for. And then as the day went on, more and more people started to leave the photo shoot to where there was nobody left but him and her. So... Basically, he tells her, okay, so take your dress off, get undressed. And she's like, you know, she's real hesitant. She didn't want to fucking do it. And you can see she just, oh, I didn't like, uh, I didn't like the look on her face. I didn't like, that was another scene that gave me a lump in my throat, just watching her go through that. Because she felt so ashamed. She felt so violated. She felt so, uh. And then he tells her to take her bottoms off. And... He takes pictures of her. He tells her to touch it and all that. And I could only imagine what it is for somebody to feel like they've been born in the wrong body and to have a constant reminder of something that is is shameful to you and is embarrassing to you. I couldn't imagine. Oh, I'm oh, I'm getting sad thinking about it again. Oh. Uh, just just moving on from that. I just want to move on from that because I'm getting sad thinking about that again. Just what she went through. I, mm. Back at the um, the ball, <laughs> pray tell being petty betty on the goddamn mic. <laughs> he's being petty betty doing what he do. Candy and Lulu come out and so he's clowning their ass. They got on some old slave shit. Uh, he clowning their ass. Do what they do, right? So, of course, it comes Electra, uh, Electra Abundance. And she's giving us Marie Antoinette realness. She's got the little carousel going on. This bitch went all the way down to the guillotine. Even Pray Tell is like, y'all did a whole guillotine for this mess? Really? <laughs> I'm thinking the same fucking thing. Like, the fuck? But... It was cute, though. I love the theatrics of it. So, pray tell, you know, he starts kind of going in on her, right? He calls her out for not being there for her community when it came to doing the protest at um, St. Was it St. Whatever. 
St. Somebody's Cathedral. And so she's like, you know, whatever. I was working. And pray tell calls her ass out again. He's like, bitch, you worked the night shift. This was during the motherfucking day. There was no reason for you to not be there for your fucking community. He snaps. He goes, and she's like, look here, how about you just have the judges read me my motherfucking scores? He was like, well, bitch, we ain't got to read them. We already know. You won. You won last week, the week before that, and the week before that. Here's your motherfucking trophy. Goes, gets the trophy, and throws it down and smashes it. He is mad, baby. I mean, big mad. Get a nigga cape, he would have been super mad. So she's like, um, look, which we all know, Electra Abundance is all about looking good to everybody else, which means she's, we already know the bitch is broken on the inside. Her motherfucking heart is fucking black. The one time that she was showing some compassion last season, and that's only because her ass was out on the motherfucking street. Detective Stabler had threw her motherfucking ass to the goddamn wolves. But anyways, pray tell reads her ass and he gets pissed, throws a trophy at her. And she's like, bitch, you better give me another motherfucking trophy. Pray tell so goddamn pissed off about it. He's like, look, um, I need y'all somebody else to come and call this goddamn show before my motherfucking head, the back of my head explodes. He gets pissed. He gets pissed and he walks the fuck off. And as he is walking off, he tells that bitch, wait the fuck up. And walks off. Yes, honey, God. Yes, the fuck he did. Then it was Angel's turn to walk. And like always, Angel gave us pure... I had some water on my lip, y'all. Sorry. Angel gave us pure life without the possibility of parole. She looked beautiful. She was out there walking, doing her thing. Now, the category was runway realness, right? And I think it was what the, the, the guy on the mic was saying is what made Angel break down. He was like, look at her. She can give the illusion of being real fit. She can give the illusion of being a real model. She can make you all think that she's a real model walking the runways. And of course, you know, Angel ends up winning. They call her to give her her trophy and she just breaks down crying. She breaks down and she ends up running off, you know, the back of the stage and Poppy and Blanca go back there to check on her. It's like, look, baby, this is the time we need to be celebrating. Like, you know, what's wrong? What's going on with you? And so she ends up telling them, you know, like, um, I, 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 I'll never be a real model. I'll never be able to walk the runways. You know, um, I, I'll never be one of those girls. And so she breaks down and tells them that the photographer ended up taking those pictures of her and Poppy instantly got pissed. Poppy was ready to goddamn go off right then and there. Blanca was like, look here, not on my motherfucking watch, baby. She fucking snapped. They end up going over there and uh, Poppy beat the breaks off that motherfucking photographer. I mean, he whipped his ass, which is what the fuck he deserved too. They got all of her pictures and they got the negatives, which was smart on their goddamn ass. So he can't go and he can't try to exploit her for no goddamn reason. They got everything, right? And so she goes and she ends up taking the pictures, the headshots back to the casting call. And of course she got it. Of course she got it. We knew she was going to get it. Angel, you better Angel, you better do it, bitch. You better do it. Blanca and Angel are talking, um, and um, Blanca ends up telling Angel that her T-cell count is low and that she's not feeling good. And, you know, they ha they embrace, they have this little moment, whatever. And so um, later on that night, when they're having their Friday night dinner, of course, Angel tells everybody that she made it to the top 10 of the casting call. Like always, dinner is going good. Everybody's cheers and they're celebrating Blanca. And in walks Electra Abundance ass late a fucking again. Late again. And talking shit coming in. So... Blanca's telling her, look, you late again and you didn't set the table. Like, there's rules in this house. And so here's um, Electra's ass. She's like, um, who gives a damn about 99 cent plates and gives a damn about this and blah, 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 blah. She snaps, flips the motherfucking table over in the middle of fucking dinner. Food and shit going everywhere. Blanca getting ready to tell her. She was like, you know what? Electra's like, uh, you ain't got to tell me. I quit. Bitch leaves from there goes over to Candy and Lulu's house, knocks on the door, is like, I'm joining your house. You're welcome, bitches.
Y'all invite this out. Y'all tell this bitch she come over here. She walked in and said, I'm joining the house. You're welcome, bitches. Just like that. And from there, the episode ends. They're all at the ball. And, of course, Madonna's going on. And um, Blanca, once again, is saying how Madonna is going to change the world for the community. And... It ends right there. Y'all, this first episode, I loved it. I love, love, love Pose. I'm so excited to see more episodes. I'm excited to bring you all more episodes. If you like this review, please comment. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video. Share with your family and friends. Let me know what you think. And I will see you all in the next video. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.